And welcome back to the Sporting News Studios. Tom Vandervoort and Stephen Levine with Scott Ridge, NFL editor. And if we're going to pay attention to any preseason game, preseason game number three should maybe be the one we watch most closely. That's because it's uh, the most that the starters, the first team players, are going to play in preseason. They want to get them ready. They call it a dress rehearsal for week one. Theory is then you rest in the final week of preseason to, to make sure that they're healthy going into the regular season. So that's why you're going to see Cam Newton for three quarters. That's why most teams are going to play their starters for at least a half. And you're going to get a good, pretty good indication of where teams stand depending on how much stock you put in preseason. You're going to get about as honest a, a look at your team this week. Well, I hope for Indianapolis Colts fans that it's not a dress rehearsal because Peyton Manning's not going to start. What's the situation with Peyton? They just signed Kerry Collins. That all but tells me he's not going to be ready for week one. It's coming off neck surgery, and the initial uh, prognosis was uh, six to eight weeks. Well, he's a good uh, eight weeks behind that. So there are real concerns there. That's why they hired Kerry Collins or signed him yesterday. And I tell you what, he didn't exactly get a welcome from uh, Reggie <laughs> Wayne, his, his top guy. And Reggie, I can understand what he's saying. It's, look, you can't come in and just pick up this offense off the street. I agree, but Collins has history with Caldwell from Penn State, and He's also been around the block a few times. And I would say this, that Curtis Painter hasn't exactly opened uh, eyes around the league. Well, how far do you think they can go with Collins? I mean, if, if they open the season with Collins, is, are their playoff hopes done? Uh, no, not done. It depends on when Peyton comes back. And how but, many games? Right. There's a very real possibility they could go 0-3. Keep in mind, this is without Peyton. You look at week two against the Browns on paper, you'd say, yeah, Indianapolis should win that game. Not without Peyton. I don't believe that. You know, the, the book on Manning is you don't blitz him because he'll kill you. Well, teams are going to blitz Kerry Collins, Curtis Painter, or Dan Orlovsky, whoever they have yeah. behind center. <laughs> and that's going to be big problems for the Colts. Well, the blitz was an interesting situation last year when New England played Detroit, and Tom Brady ended up with a perfect quarterback rating out of that game. <laughs> Those two teams play again this weekend. What are you looking for there? It's a real measuring stick game right. for the Lions. Yeah, Detroit's kind of a chic pick to be a sleeper this right. year. Uh, they cite their defensive line, and, and it is good, and it's getting better. The problem is Nick Fairley hasn't been on the field yet uh, in a meaningful way. He got injured, I think, in the first day of camp. Right. He's coming off foot surgery. That's not the problem for the Lions. They chased Brady all over the field last Thanksgiving, and he still put up that perfect quarterback rating. The problem is what's behind that defensive line. They rebuilt their whole linebacking crew through yep. uh, free agency, and their cornerback situation, which was the biggest team need, really wasn't addressed in a meaningful way during the draft and in free agency. They got Eric Wright, yep. who didn't start, uh, wasn't a full-time starter for the Browns last year. So they've got, yes, the Lions are a team that's improving, and it's uh, building around their defense, but they've got serious holes. and. Uh, I think New England, if Brady gets some, uh, a decent amount of reps in this game, is going to show exactly <laughs> where the Lions are right now. Now talk to me a little bit about Seattle and Denver. Tim Tebow, such the focus of a lot of this offseason and preseason. They're going to trade Kyle Orton, and Tebow's finally going to get his shot. And now we're hearing these, like, third on the depth chart, fourth on, 18th on the depth chart. <laughs> what the hell is going on with Tim Tebow? It. Is there a more polarizing figure in the NFL right now? You know, it's it seems incredible. to be there's a question about his skill set, but then he's got a lot of supporters who are just saying, hey, the guy's a winner, he's got a great attitude, what's everyone ganging up on him for? I think we can all agree that he's a project right now, but a highly successful one coming out of college. What surprises me is sort of the level of dismissal from analysts. Uh, yesterday was Boomer Esiason yeah. saying he can't play, he can't throw thing with Tebow is in the limited time he's had in NFL games, he's been reasonably effective. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a good test for John Elway as uh, the CEO of the Broncos, what he does with it. And the options are you develop him as a quarterback mm -hmm. uh, in case Orton walks next year in free agency or gets hurt. You change positions, uh, which it seems this late in the season you might not want to do, or you trade or release them, and they're not going to get equal value back if they decide to trade them. So it's not an easy 
uh, question for, for Elway to answer right now. Doesn't it seem to you guys like there's more in terms of this criticism than, that, that's going on than just what he brings to the field? It, it seems like there's there's sort of this 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 groundswell of criticism, yeah. and it's not only about his mechanics. Well, Randy Cross the other day said that it's because of what he stands for, his outspoken Christianity. And, I, you know, fine, I get it, but one of the most admired men in America is Tony Dungy, who really... Uh, espoused Christianity beliefs as a coach for the Colts. He wrote Joe, a bestseller, Joe, Joe Gibbs. Gibbs to that list. He's very it? upfront about his faith. So there's something beyond just that. I think part of it is the fact that Tebow wrote a bestseller and he's already got endorsements before he's had any real meaningful time in the NFL. But I'll tell you what, the more the analysts uh, rip this guy, the more the fan base in Denver is going to root for him to be the starting quarterback if Orton struggles. And that's the key to it all. He wins, everything's good in Denver, and they just go merrily on. But Orton has yet to show that he can lead the Broncos to a playoff.